Now, one of the most wonderful things about the Bible, the Word of God, is that it's the only book in the world that can do for certain where you are going when you die. There has never been another book written. There has never been another book written anywhere that you can give you assurance about your salvation outside of the Word of God. People who do not believe the Word of God do not know where they're going when they die, and that's a fact. Yes, it's sad but true. People that do not believe the Word of God means literally what it says, literally, do not know where they're going when they die. And one of the crimes and sins of this age is a scholastic crime and a scholastic sin whereby scholars have deceived people into disbelief and unbelief of the literal meaning of the Word of God. Because the Bible is the only book in the world that can tell you exactly where you're going when you die. People who do not believe the Bible do not know where they're going when they die. And people who profess to be educated, many of them have no idea where they're going when they die. Now I want to talk to you this evening about evidences of regeneration. Evidences. That is, ways in which you can know that you're saved. Know where you're going when you die. A man said one time, he said, I think it'd be, it would be very presumptuous to say I know where I'm going when I die. No, no, it wouldn't be. You haven't thought that out carefully. It would be very presumptuous to say you didn't know where you were going when you die when God has given us a book, and it's been in existence now for several thousand years, God has given us a book that tells us we can know where we're going to go when we die. It would be presumptuous to say you didn't know. Now, here's the trouble. A fellow says, I'm saved. Somebody says, well, I think that's presumption. Nobody's good enough to know the saved. Well, that's the talk of an unsaved man. The reason an unsaved man thinks it's presumptuous to say you know you're saved is because the unsaved fellow is counting on something he's doing to save himself. You understand? The reason why a fellow says, I don't believe you can be saved is because he's counting on something he's doing to save himself. And so, of course, he can't know. <laughs> now, many women, it's not presumption for me to say I know that I'm saved. If I know I'm saved because of something I'm doing, that's presumption. But I'm not counting on my salvation for something I'm doing. People who count on their salvation depend upon what they're doing to know whether they're saved or not. They never know whether they're saved or not. I'm resting this evening in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I know that I've been born again, regenerated by His Spirit. And I want to draw for you tonight the evidences of regeneration. There are certain evidences that follow the experience of every person who is born again. Now, if you want to know <coughs> whether or not you're saved, watch this picture. If you want to be sure of your salvation, I'm going to draw for you the evidences of regeneration. If you have these evidences, the chances are 10 to 1 that you've been born again and you are saved. If you don't have them, you need to check up and examine yourself and prove yourself whether you be in the faith. The first evidence, the first evidence of regeneration is a love for God. That's the first evidence of regeneration, a love for God. Now, I'm not talking about knowing God. I'm talking about loving God. The psalmist said in Psalm 73, verse 25, he said, Whom have I in heaven uh, beside thee? And he said, Upon earth there is none that I desire beside thee. The psalmist loved God. Let me ask you a question. Do you love God? Oh, I know you know about him. I know you believe there is a God. But how do you feel? Do you love him? When you think about him, does it, does it stir you? Do you love him as much as you love your wife? Do you love him as much as you love your girlfriend? Do you love him as much as you love your mother? Men and women, one of the surest evidences of regeneration in this world is a sincere and true love for God. Now, secondly, one of the evidences of regeneration is a love for God's Word. You won't find a saved person anywhere in the United States that does not love the Word of God. And when I say love, when I say love the Word of God, I mean they truly love the Word of God. I'm not talking just about believing the Word of God and marveling at its cadences and poetic grandeur and that nonsense. I mean a person who's been born again loves God's Word. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 97, he said, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation day and night. A saved person loves God's Word. They just don't admire it. They, they just love it. They just love it. These are two of the evidences of regeneration. Love for God and love 
for God's word. One time a preacher came over to the house and he couldn't find any Bible in the house. And the lady of the house said to the little girl, she said, Honey, will you go into the next room and get out that big book that all the family loved so well? <laughs> and the little girl went in the other room and she came back with the Sears Roebuck catalog. That's how people are about the word of God. But people who are saved, people who have been regenerated by God's spirit, not only love God, they love his word. And they're offended when that word is tampered with. They love the word of God. And that is in all a third evidence and a third certain evidence of regeneration is a love for God's people. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, in that you love one another. The Bible says we know we've passed from death to life. That means an evidence of regeneration. We know, we don't guess, we don't hope, we don't think, we don't feel, we know. We know we have passed from death to life. Well, how do we know? Because we love the brethren. It says that in 1 John, chapter 3, verse 14. We know we've passed from death to life. Now listen to me, men and women. If you're saved, if you've truly been born again, you cannot hate your brother or sister in Christ. Now, the Bible says not to have fellowship with unsaved people in the sense of getting close, too close to them. Try to lead them to Christ if you can. But the Bible does say you ought to love the brethren. You ought to love people who have been born again. And people who don't love their brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible said, they abide in death. You should love the brethren. Now, hold on a minute. The Bible doesn't say you have to trust them. The Bible doesn't say you have to hang out with them. If you have it in for some Christian, forgive him and ask God to help you to love him. And, and if you can't get along with him, then stay away from him. But you have to love him. Listen, the meanest things I've ever had said about me have been said by religious leaders who profess the new birth. But I love them. I can't help but love them. I've been born again. And one of the evidences, one of the best evidences of regeneration is a love for God's people. One time I heard an old time preacher say something that's, that's very easy to misunderstand if you're not too spiritual. He said, he said, the more I understand about people and the more I know church people, he said, the more I understand why Jesus spent most of his time with sinners. Now that's hard to understand, but there's, there's something to it. Sometimes God's people are harder to get along with than unsaved people in matters of business and character. And yet if you have been born again, if you're a child of God, you love God's people. You can't help it. It's one of the evidences of regeneration. When I first went to school up at Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina, I was told by a man who'd been a Christian for many years, and he was a godly man. He said, Pete, he said, you're going to find out several things about the Christian life. I said, what's that? Well, he said, you're going to find, first of all, the closer you get to God, the closer you're going to get to the devil. That seemed like a paradox. I couldn't understand it at the time, but I understand it now. And he said something else. He said, Pete, he said, Pete, you're going to find that the people that will hurt you most in the ministry will be Christians. And I couldn't understand that then, but I understand it now. And yet, for the life of me, I can't help but love God's people. They're my people. They're Christians. They've been regenerated. And the Bible says, by this, by this, shall all men know that ye, might be, that ye are my disciples and that you love one another. One of the evidences of regeneration is a love for God's people. Yes, and that isn't all. Another evidence of regeneration is a taste for a new life. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It says that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And if you have been born again, if you have been born again, then you're losing a taste for the old life, and you're acquiring a taste for the new life. Old things are passing away. Behold, all things are becoming new. That is one of the most sure and most certain evidences of regeneration. Another evidence of regeneration is an inner conflict. The Bible says the spirit lusts against the flesh, and the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the two are contrary one to another, so you cannot do that which you would. You have an inner conflict. Before you were saved, you had no inner conflict. Before you received Christ, you've always found a way to do what you wanted to do. You either found the scripture to do it, or your friends talked you to do it, or your conscience found a way to alibi out of it. But before you received Christ, you could always find an alibi to do what you wanted to do. 
But since you've received the Lord Jesus Christ, it's hard to do anything that's wrong without your conscience raising a squalor about it. Yes, that's so. It's true, ladies and gentlemen. It's absolutely true that one of the surest evidences in the world of regeneration is a conflict inside between good and evil that you never had before you were saved. Now, I don't say these evidences are infallible, but I say if you have one or more of them, or two or three or more of them, the chances are you've been born again and you have definitely received Christ as your own personal Savior because he brings these things into the human heart when he comes. And an inner conflict is a sure sign of, of regeneration. And something else, the witness of the Holy Spirit himself. Now, if you're sitting by your television set tonight, when you get through watching this telecast, take out your Bible and read carefully through 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. And I believe you'll find the word no is mentioned there eight times. We don't guess we're saved. We don't hope we're saved. We don't think we're saved. We don't feel like we're saved. We're not depending upon something we're doing to save us. We're not depending upon something we have done to save us. We're not depending upon something we're going to do to save us. We are resting on the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. And when we receive him as our personal Savior, he gives us the witness of the Spirit within. A man said, why, my religious group teaches that we receive Jesus every day. You do? That's mighty strange. People who have received him have the witness of the Spirit that they already have received him. And there's no necessity for receiving him again. The Bible says, receive, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. And one of the surest signs in the world that you've been born again is the evidence of the Spirit, the witness of the Spirit in your heart that you are a child of God. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to conclude. Ladies and gentlemen, the most presumptuous man in the audience tonight is not the man that says he knows he's saved. The most presumptuous person in my audience tonight is the person that says they don't know they're saved when they can know. God is not going to judge you for what you know. He's going to judge you for what you could have known. And you can know you're saved if you do what God tells you to do, receive the Son. The Bible says we know we've passed from death to life. We know we've passed from death to life because we love the brethren. We know that we dwell in him by his spirit which he hath given us. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. We know we're saved. That isn't presumption, that's just taking God at his word. Now why don't you know you're saved? Receive God's Son, believe on him, come to know him, whom to know aright is life everlasting. And you'll have these evidences, God will give them to you, and you'll know that you are a child of God. God bless you and keep you in his will till Christ comes.